All right, so this is going to be take two. This time we're doing microphone without dead cat. It's probably a mistake. Hey everyone, this is Rob from Intended Consequences. On this episode of Pursue the Ride, I'm going to talk to you about Harley Davidson customer service versus the Power Sports customer service. Hit the graphic. so just a few disclaimers one I've been to about 20 Harley Davidson dealerships and I've been to about a half dozen power sports dealerships now power sports can be usually the big four for Japanese bikes uh, European bikes basically everything that's not Harley Davidson you can find at most power sports dealerships and that's why I lump those two together I also want to point out that I completely understand that individual experiences may differ. I understand there could be some really terrible ones out there and really great ones out there. Now I'm just talking about my experience, generally speaking, here in the southeast region where I've been to enough of these things and noticed a bit of a pattern and that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. So walking in to a dealership you're gonna get about the same experience, right? Some floor guy or gal is gonna be walking along, they're gonna see you, and you're gonna be looking at bikes or whatever it is you're doing, and they're gonna come over and offer to help you. And depending on if you wanna buy a bike or you're thinking about buying a bike, the answers will probably, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this bike or this type of bike or whatever. And generally speaking, most types of dealerships will you know, work with you there, right? They're not, you're not gonna have any problems here. Where it really comes down to being problematic is the test ride. And this is where you can really tell who wants your business and who doesn't. I'm gonna start with Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, you wanna test ride a bike? You go in, you fill out some paperwork, you show them your driver's license, give them your insurance information. They make copies of everything. And they give you the keys and they go, go ahead, go on and uh, you know, be back in 15 minutes or so you know whatever they'll, they'll give you some things but basically they're just gonna let you go go on ride the bike especially if you already have a motorcycle endorsement and you know like like you look like you know how to ride like for example you show up and maybe you've got riding gear already and maybe you can already just get on the bike and turn it on without much help that kind of stuff now power sports is different because power sports, they don't let you test ride their bikes. And if you do get a test ride, they babysit you. And here's what I mean. I'll give you a story. So there was a bike at a power sports I was looking at. And I was interested in it. So I had to drive about two and a half hours to get there. Now before I even left the house, when I was looking on the website, it had that little button. You know, would you like to schedule a test ride? And I clicked it. I said, yes set it all up dude from the power sports calls says hey when are you gonna be here I told him about the time I said hey you know I'm traveling like two and a half hours to look at his bike so plus or minus 15 20 minutes please and okay cool then he comes back and he's like hey are you sure and I'm like yeah I'm sure what was yeah of course and then he proceeds to lay out how it's a very expensive motorcycle and how he's got to be sure. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I ride Harleys. And the price difference between a Harley and a Power Sports bike is astronomical. Like, a high-end super sport bike costs the same as a base model Harley touring bike. So, I mean, I don't care about price. But a Harley, you know, you break it, you buy it just like anywhere else but these guys I don't know they were real hesitant but anyway he agreed I go up there and I'm gonna test ride the bike and he's like how familiar with the area are you because he knew I had to drive a little bit and I said well you know uh, I'm pretty pretty familiar with this area 
but I'm not super familiar with this area. There's a lot of construction going on and stuff, and, and I don't know if some stuff might have changed since the last time I was up here. So instead of just doing like, hey, go down the road, loop around and come back, or, you know, kind of give me some advice, the dude goes and jumps on a bike, and now I'm going to lead, he's going to lead me. That's, oh, okay, well. I really want to test ride this bike, so if that's what I got to do. And we proceed, he follows, or I follow him out. We go about a quarter of a mile down the road, turn around and come back. And that was it, that was a test ride. And at that point, by the time we got back, I was so annoyed with this dude that I didn't schedule another test ride. I just left it alone, I'm like, all right, whatever, man. And now this hasn't repeated other power sports, but I get the same attitude, like like they want to be helpful, but if they sense maybe you're on the fence about something or, or start pushing a little bit, they back off, like other things. So here's another thing, right? I go to a different power sports because their website says they have this bike and they don't have it. And I try to point out, I was like, well, your website, like right here on my phone, I pull it up says you have this bike this one right here I'm pointing at it and they're like yeah the website is wrong I'm like it's your website and apparently for the power sports folks they manage their website someone else manages it they don't even manage it. they're like you need to check our Facebook page to see our current inventory I'm like hmm that's interesting your Facebook page to see the current inventory well, and other times, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I don't know these Power Sports guys. I got services done at a Power Sports place once, and this is what I asked them. I said, hey, because I had just gotten a Honda Shadow, and I wanted it checked out before I rode it. I brought it privately, and I take it over there. Again, these are all different Power Sports places. I'm like, hey, will you please just do a, a service on my motorcycle here? I just bought it and you know see if it's okay make sure you know everything's good to go before i start really riding it on the street and stuff and they're like all right cool so they call me like a week later hey your bike's ready for pickup i'm cool i go down there and get this i'm looking at the receipt and it just has a, a cost they just you know change the oil or whatever and I'm like, hey, can I get a breakdown of everything y'all check? Because I'm not sure what all y'all checked on this thing. I just like a, a, a breakdown, please, of, of everything, like a checklist or whatever. And they're like, we don't have a checklist. I'm like, okay, well, what did you check? Well, we just checked the bike over. But okay, what did you check? And they could, I'm in the service department, and I can't even get an answer to this. But I'm paying like 300 bucks for something. I don't know what. And then I ride off and I realized that a blinker wasn't working that was working when I turned it in. So I turned around, went back. Hey, you need to fix my blinker. Again, it's just like, I can't get a good customer service anywhere. Now Harley, of course, they're not perfect. And I rag on Harley a lot, but in this instance, I've never had a problem if I want a test ride you know as long as I'm going in there and I'm looking like I'm a serious customer you know it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to get a test ride wearing flip-flops it's gonna be hard to get a test ride if you don't have a motorcycle endorsement you know what I mean but you go in there hey I'd like to test ride this bike you know they're not gonna let you test ride their CVO right their $50,000 motorcycle you can pretty much forget about that but a base model motorcycle sure here you go fill it out Boop. hit the road and you're on a twenty thousand dollar bike a base model touring bike i don't even care about what the average bike cost is at harley davidson they're expensive man so even a base model is going to run you 20 grand i could get an r1 for less than that that's a, one of the fastest bikes on the planet so whatever but anyway and harley just puts you on that's it. You go ride around for a little bit, come back. You either liked it or you didn't, but whatever, right? I, I don't know. I don't even know what else to say. Like, it's so easy. You go to the service department and you go, hey, what is your, uh, 
you know, 5,000 mile service. What do you look at? 10,000 mile service. What do you look at? I come in here and I tell you, hey, you know, it's making this sound. What do you, you know, like it's simple stuff, but they got checklists, man. They got a list of things that they look at specifically and they can tell you. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with power sports, but maybe I need to go to some more. Have you had a good experience at a power sports dealership? Let me know in the comments below. Put their name down. Rec recognize a dealership that's giving you good service. Because I like to know about that. Also, leave a comment down below if you've gone into a Harley and they've given you their butt to kiss. Let me know in the comments if a Harley Davidson has treated you like crap. Just ignored you or you didn't feel it was taking you seriously. And don't be putting they didn't take me seriously when I walked in there in flip flops and shorts and my hat, baseball hat turned around backwards and I asked to ride their CVO and they said no. Don't give me that crap. I want to recognize good power sports dealerships and bad Harley dealerships. And maybe I'll do a follow up video later. Cause here's my point, there's a big difference, man. I don't know, I don't know why. But between all the ones I've been to, that's the biggest thing is power sports. It's like they're just there to check the block. I don't know if it's because there's a lot of different companies. I don't know if that's because of a lot of different companies represented in a power sports dealership, a lot of different brands represented. And Harley, of course, is just Harley. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that has something to do with it. But I don't know. I go into a power sports dealership and I'm just I'm sad about it. I'm disappointed like every time. I go into a Harley, everyone seems cool, everyone's friendly. If you want to test ride a bike, you can test ride a bike. Whatever. Majority of Harley Davidsons I've been into, man, super cool, super nice. They're there to sell motorcycles and they're, they're gonna do everything they can to put you on a motorcycle. And if you wanna take a test ride, you go take that test ride. You know what I'm saying? Power sports, you're gonna walk in, they're gonna be nice, but they're probably not gonna have the bike you want. And if they do, good luck with that test ride. Maybe you get it, maybe they, maybe they let you follow them for half a mile. And then ask you like, what do you think? Like, what do I think? I drove out of the parking lot. What do you mean what I think? I think the engine turned on. Hell, I didn't even have to go anywhere to figure that out. I don't know. I'm salty about it because I drove two and a half hours on a bike I was really interested in. And they lost the sale that day. I walked away. I'm like, nah. If this is the way it's gonna be, this ain't gonna happen. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep the rubber side down, y'all. I'll see you next time.